Hi, my name is Josh Clark from the YouTube channel NS Modeler 24, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to weather a scale trains coil car. This is a Protect 3 aluminum coil car, and we're going to be taking a look at how to weather it and make it look just a little bit more like the prototype. From the factory, it's extremely well detailed. It also comes with some loads on the inside. I went ahead and added the stickers, which represent the uh, covering and tarps for the coils. And I went ahead and glued them in as well. Since I don't have any need to remove the loads, I decided it was best to glue them in so they don't rattle or come loose while we're operating the car in the layout. So the first step that we're gonna do is go ahead and mask the loads, and we're gonna do this for two reasons. One, I believe the hood is made out of aluminum. I could be wrong, but um, it's definitely a different material in real life than the steel frame of the car. And so because of that, when you look at prototype pictures, you'll notice that they weather just a little bit differently, whether the, the hood is maybe a little bit more rusty or has a different uh, patterned rust than the base of the car. So we're gonna try to represent that. And to do so, we're actually gonna weather the frame and the hood separately to really achieve that effect and make it look good. So the first thing I'm doing here is masking off the coils. And the second reason that I'm doing that um, is that it really gives us a nice um, base to hold on to the car. So not only would, you know, the, co the coils are new, so we don't want those to be weathered. Um, we want them to look new, like they're from the factory, just like they would be in real life. But this also gives us just a really nice way to handle the car. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch and crease the top of the tape there. And you can see now we can pick up the car without having to worry about damaging any of the fragile details along the bottom of this car. Now from the car, uh, from the factory, the car comes extremely well detailed. You can see it has the walkways, a lot of underbody detail, um, hoses, cut levers, step ladders, and all sorts of other things that you just wanna be careful um, when you're moving this car around. But because we've created this nice handle with the masking tape, we're really able to get to the underside of the car and hold this nicely while we, we go through the weathering. just a few other details on the bottom of the car here you can see the uh, trucks and wheels with rolling bearing caps and a lot of the underbody detail for the air brake rigging as well as I mentioned we are going to weather the two of these separately and I've lo looked at a lot of prototype pictures and I've noticed that the hood is usually pretty dark brown and whether it's rust or dirt and then the straps or um, ribs on the side of the car are usually a bright silver now, to be honest, I'm not sure why this does, does it in real life. It could be that the straps were replaced or potentially um, they just don't get as dirty and weather like the rest of it. So um, we're, we're gonna go ahead and begin our weathering with a little bit of a dull coat. That's gonna really get rid of any of the oils or residue from fingerprints that might've been on there from handling the car. And I like to use a, a Krylon dull coat for that. And you saw that on the screen just a minute ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and dull coat it. We'll flip it around here and get the other side as well. And we're gonna dull coat the top of the hood as well. Not only does this get rid of the residue for the fingers, but it also um, kind of dulls down the factory paint. From the factory, they look freshly painted, which is a great thing. However, that's not the effect we're going for today. So we're just gonna dull it down and, and really kind of kill two birds with one stone here, so to speak. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is weather the underframe, and we're using an airbrush set to about 25 PSI for the outlet pressure of the air tank and air compressor. And then for the paint, I have about 50% thinner to about 50% paint. And the paint color itself is a mix of light brown and dark brown, and a little bit of gray as well from Model Master. Usually I kind of eyeball it so I don't have an exact uh, color ratio mix. And uh, usually, usually it's about a third, a third, and a third for just the paint. And then obviously I thinned that down with the paint thinner. So this is enamel paint, however you can use acrylic paints as well, and that's really just up to your preference. But the colors itself, um, like I said, are, are two different browns and then a gray to kind of achieve that um, dirt look that you could find on the prototype. And this is a pretty common color uh, combination that I use for engines, locomotives, and especially cars here. It just really represents the dirt well. And as you're weathering this with an airbrush, one thing to keep in mind is that you want to approach it from all angles. You can see there's a lot of details and bracing for the walkway on the car here. So if you just went straight on, you wouldn't actually be able to weather the tops and sides of all the little supports and detail parts. So as I weather this car, I'm going to approach it from the left side, from the right side, from the top and the bottom. And you can see we're able to hold and move the car with the tape 
uh, while we airbrush it. I'm also going to uh, get the trucks and wheels with this as well. And by rolling it back and forth, I'm able to paint the entire wheel without having to remove it from the truck itself. So that's just a little tip there to kind of make things go a little bit smoother and quicker. I also know that a lot of people don't have access to an airbrush and that's completely fine. This entire step can be done with weathering powders as well. We use weathering powders by AIM and they have light brown, dark brown, dirt. They have a lot of different colors and you can look online from your favorite hobby store um, to find the, the color powder that you want that matches the prototype that you want. So just because you don't have an airbrush doesn't mean you can weather a car or doesn't mean you can't weather a car. You know, you're able to really achieve the same effect with just a paintbrush and some powders. However, you do need to be a little bit more careful around all the detail parts if you are using a brush. So for that reason, if you decide to use the weathering powders, I'd recommend um, a really loose brush as the um, stiffer brushes can kind of damage some of the detail parts while you're applying it. And our little uh, handle, which is the masking tape, is really coming in handy here to weather the underside of this car. A key to any successful weathering job is really layers. You can see that I have the nozzle um, really turned way down, where it's a very small amount of paint that's coming out of it. And, and that's because um, you really are able to achieve a nice fine uh, detailed effect with that. So here, what I actually ended up doing was turning up the nozzle. And if you turn up the nozzle too much in airbrush, it actually gets kind of chunky. But I was actually able to um, spray paint it and, and usually this isn't an effect that people would want where the paint comes out chunky, but for this particular effect on the hood, I noticed that the rusting effect or the dirt effect, whatever it is in real life, was kind of chunky. Um, <laughs> and so I decided to go ahead and turn, up, turn down the air pressure and turn up open the nozzle. And so you can see it sprayed um, just like I was hoping it would come out. So usually this isn't an effect that you would want while you're airbrushing, but in our particular case for the weathering, it's exactly like we wanted it to come out. So um, I pretty much sprayed it the exact same as I sprayed the base of the car. Like I said, the only thing I did differently was turn down the air pressure and open the nozzle to allow more paint to come up. And um, that will um, make the paint come out more coarse and obviously less fine to kind of get the effect that you see here. Now, I always think that if you do have airbrush and powders, you can really create some neat effects by using both of them. They both have advantages and disadvantages, um, but when used in combination, you can really create a neat looking weathering effect. So here, after the uh, paint has dried from the airbrush and we've dull coat it, I'm applying just a little bit of uh, weathering powders, and this is actually a mix of weathering powders. They didn't quite have the color I was looking for. I believe it's a light brown or light rust color uh, mixed with a dirt, a dark dirt color, a dark brown. Um, to kind of create the same color as you would find um, that we that we had coming out of the airbrush but this just uh, gives a nice base coat and it kind of smooths things out on the top of the hood um, and again i'm working off some prototype pictures I'm now going to wipe off some of the weathering powders. I know this seems kind of counterintuitive, but whenever you're using weather, weathering powders, you can apply them and then remove them. And what that does is it leaves a little bit of extra weathering powder and dirt in the cracks and crevices of the molding and the shell. So it really uh, kind of defines some of the um, details on the shell and really makes them stand out. So that's what I did here. I just went back with uh, just a little paper towel piece that was crumpled up. Um, it wasn't damp or wet or anything in this case, but I just lightly wiped it off to um, kind of, like I said, highlight some of the details on the shell here. So once it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up and remove the hood and we'll begin working on the frame and base of the car again. Once the paint has dried from the airbrush, we're gonna give it a quick clear coat again. And when I say clear coat or dull coat, I use those interchangeably. They are um, both the same and I use the same product for all the weathering dull coats and clear coats that I use. 
Now the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is a little bit of detail painting to the hood itself. Um, I guess I could have masked this off, but that's such a complex piece. Uh, the geometry on it is very complex. I figured it was easy to go back and repaint the um, pieces rather than try to mask them off. So what I have here is actually just a little bit of cement color. It matches the gray well that's found on these cars in real life. And just using a fine brush, which we picked up from our local hobby shop, which I believe was a hobby town. Um, we're just going back and, and painting um, the non-aluminum parts of this car, which kind of uh, kept their color a little bit better than some of the other um, aspects of the hood. One tricky thing here is that you want to get the inside as well because it's an open piece you could look through and see the supports on the back side so it's really important to make sure that you don't just get the outside but also get the insides of all the braces as well i'm also going to go ahead and get the um, supports here i believe that's what's used to pick up the hood but i could be wrong so um, whatever those pieces are in real life we're going to go ahead and paint those as well just like we did to the centerpiece to make sure that it's um, painted just like you'd find on the prototype all right, so if you look at the prototype pictures, you'll notice that um, the ribs and bracing on this car are actually not as weathered as the hood itself. I'm not quite sure why that is on the prototype, but uh, you will see that it's definitely a lighter silver color. So I thought about painting them. Um, however, I found that this technique works just as well. Also, whenever you're painting really fine detail parts like this, it can be pretty easy to actually overpaint or uh, color outside of the line, so to speak, and then you have to go back and fix it. It just creates more of more work and can be a little bit of a headache. So this is a technique, if it works well on ribs, you can very lightly um, and gently remove the weathering um, down to the base paint of the model. Um, these are painted well from the factory, have a nice thick coat of paint. And so you can actually remove the weathering and the dull coat, um, which I applied before, and then you just get that silver, which looks just like you'd find on the prototype. So you can see here, I'm actually gonna try to um, go around the paint as well. Uh, for some reason, the paint, whenever I looked at the prototype pictures, seemed to, to not, um, you know, the, to, to kind of stick well over the rib. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint right up to the P on the Protect, um, in between the P and the base of the P and then down below it as well. And same with um, the rest of the, the lettering here and striping on the car as well. I'm gonna try my best to avoid it if I can, but if you can't, um, it's okay, you know, it, it's pretty close and it'll look really good either way. So I'm going to finish this with the rest of the car and then um, we will pick up with the next step. So once we finished removing the paint from the hood, we gave everything one more quick dull coat and clear coat to make sure that all the weathering is sealed in and the car is going to be safe for handling in the future. We can now begin removing some of the masking tape. I would just encourage you to be very careful whenever you're doing this as the um, coils themselves, the coverings of them are stickers, and you want to make sure you don't rip off any of the stickers. So just being very careful, taking your time and really going slow while you're doing this step is important to make sure you don't rip off any of the stickers on the coils themselves. As you can see, I didn't take my time and some of the sticker came off. So uh, do as I say, not as I do. Take your time and uh, really be careful. And like you can see, whenever I was going slow on the rest of the car, there was no issues at all. You can see we can then put the hood back on. You can see the slight color variation between the hood and the frame of the car. It's subtle, but it's definitely noticeable and makes for a great looking um, weathering job once everything's done. You can also see that the weathering on the base and frame of the car is a lot more fine where the weathering on the hood is a little bit more um, coarse. And like I said, we achieved that with the paintbrush, but it's just a little difference as well there, which um, really kind of replicates the prototype well. The last thing that we're gonna go ahead and do for this car is add a little bit of uh, safety striping. Uh, you can purchase these from a couple different companies. You can use either decals or laser cut sheets of stickers. However, I like to just cut my own. You can purchase a roll of 3M a reflective yellow tape on eBay for a couple bucks and I've never had to replace it. I've probably done hundreds of cars with it and I'll probably able to be able to do another hundred cars before having to get more. It does require that you cut your own out but uh, for me that's not an issue. It only takes a couple minutes and it's pretty easy to do with an X-Acto knife. 
So I'm just going to cut out the end pieces here. The safety striping usually has a little thicker stripe on the ends of the car, or uh, it, it occasionally will have a vertical stripe versus a horizontal stripe. However, because of how this car is designed, uh, that wasn't a possibility. So uh, in real life, we're going to replicate that here in the model as well. Again, just working off of prototype pictures to see where the stripes are placed. Usually there's two on e one on each end, um, two on the ends, and then three or four in the middle, depending on how long this car is. Um, so for this one, I believe we're going to add three uh, to the middle of the car as well, just making sure that we space them out evenly. Well, that just about wraps up this video. I hope that y'all enjoyed um, and were able to learn something about weathering a scale train's Protect 3 coil car. If you guys have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. And if not, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.